Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my SQL statements tutorial. Here I will talk about the describe statement, the insert, select where, talk about comments, operators, count function, as well as the group by statement. Well, if you saw the last tutorial, you now know how to create tables and what all the different data types are. So let's check our work with the describe function. If you typed in describe followed by your database name, this is what you would see in your terminal down here below. The describe function prints out all of the information pertaining to your table's attributes. As you can see here, if null doesn't have a value, that means that a value must be set by default. If null was set, the word yes would appear in this column. If the cell is a key, the column would tell you what type of key it is, and I will cover keys in a future tutorial. The default contains any default values that are set and extra contains any additional information that is available about a given column. You can display all the tables pertained in a database also by typing show tables. You can see all the databases on the server as well by typing show databases. Now I'm going to talk about inserting data into your database. Now you have a table. How do you enter information into it? With the insert command and here it is. Just type in insert into the name of the table you want to insert information into, and then list all of your values in order based off of how you have your columns set up in your table. As you can see here, I'm entering customer information. This customer's named Paul Jones. He lives in Pennsylvania. This is a made-up birth date. He is a male. He is entering, choosing to enter no value. That's why we see the null value there. Then we are typing in a timestamp or a date and he owes us $54.96. If you don't know what this means or what we're, what we're doing here, that means you didn't see the first tutorial, so go take a check at that. You could also insert data into a table with the following command. Just simply type in insert into, whatever your table name is, in this case it's customers. Then list the two values that you want to change in this table, being last name and first name, followed by the values keyword, and then the values you want inserted into those variables being last name and first name. The final way you could load values into a table is with the load data function. You can submit a tab delimited list of values as long as they are in order. Each line will have the values separated by tabs, hence tab delimited list, and nothing else. In Microsoft Excel, in any spreadsheet software, you can create a tab delimited list you, you can also save any of your files as tab delimited, and if you look at your specific spreadsheet, you'll know exactly how to do that. After you have that prepared, just type in the following. Load data, local, in file, and then your tab delimited list, wherever it's located, followed by into table, and the name of your table, which is customers in this case. The select function provides you with the ability to access and sort your data in a multitude of ways. The general format of a select function looks like this. First you have the statement select, then you would follow that with what you want to select, then you would have the statement from, which table or tables, and finally where, followed by conditions you want the data to satisfy. And I'll give you it here. I have select, followed by a star sign, from customers, which is your table. This returns all of the data in the table customers. That's what the star represents. Note, you can put a comment in SQL with the number sign symbol or surround a comment that goes over multiple lines with the opening characters forward slash star and the closing characters star forward slash. Here's another select statement. Here I'm choosing to select all the first names from the table customers and this will output all the values stored in the cell first name. Here I'm using the select command again to give me the last name and birth date from the table customers. You can use the WHERE attribute to specify that the data retrieved fulfills your specific conditions. Here are examples. Here in this first example, I'm going to return all the information on anyone that owes us more than $10. And I do that with SELECT STAR, which is everybody, from the table customers. And the clause is WHERE money owed is greater than $10. Then in this other example, you can see here I'm selecting the first and last names and birth dates from customers where birth date is greater than 1990 January 1st. Here again I'm returning the first name for any customer that owes us over ten dollars and lives in the state of Pennsylvania. You can see here I used the logical operator AND and I'm going to describe that. There are many operators available for comparing data. We have the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, the division, the modulo which returns the remainder of a division and here's an example. If we use the modulo operator 
on a division of five by two, you would get one because the remainder of that division is one. Here are all the logical operators available to you. You have the and or the two and symbols. You can use either one, they both do the same thing, and this will return a value if both conditions are true. Then you have the or, which returns a true value if either condition is true. We have the not, which returns a true value if the operand is false. Not, in essence, just makes everything the opposite of what it is. So if it was a true condition, then it would turn it into false, and if the condition was false, it would turn it into true. Here are some comparison operators you can use with the where statement. You have the equals, less than, greater, less than or equals, greater than or equals, then you have the not equal to, and also you can see here if we use the in statement, which I'm going to explain more on later, you will return true if x is one of the values in the list. Here, the items being represented by these fake variable names y1, y2, and so forth. We'll cover the end statement in a later tutorial. Then we have comparison operators between, if we put x between y and z, it will return true if the value of x lies between y and z. The like statement returns the value true if the value of x matches the value in y based off of pattern matching, and I'll get more into this at a later date. Not like is just the opposite of like. Then we have the regular expression statement here represented by the characters regexp. It allows you to use regular expression tests on data, and you can see a regular expression tutorial I have elsewhere if you don't know how to use regular expressions. And you have the not regular expression, which is the exact opposite of the regular expression statement. And finally we have is null, which will return true if a value equals null. And then we have is not null, which is the opposite of is Let's null. say you'd like to count the number of customers that owe you more than $10. Here's an example of how you can do that. First you type in the select statement, followed by the count function, and it's saying to count all customers from the table customers where money owed is greater than $10. You could also see how many male versus female customers you have with this statement. Here we're just checking the column value of sex, we're counting all of those values from the table customers, returning that information to you. How about a statement that places the states in alphabetical order and the number of customers from each state? Do you do that with the select statement here, where we're calling for the state value, followed by the count function from the table customers, and then we're grouping everything in alphabetical order by state. If you wanted to sort in reverse alphabetical order, you could you would just simply type in the DESC value after your order by. And that is how you would get a reverse alphabetical list. Would you like to change the names of your columns to something nicer? Then you would want to use the as statement. The following statement will change all of your titles. You just see, as you can see here, between first name, you can see this statement as, and here what we're doing is we're gonna make all of our columns names change. So instead of having that underscore character in there, we're gonna have a nice uppercase F and N in first name in our columns, and we are able to achieve that because of the as statement. Well, that's all I'm able to cover in part two. You can see here in part three, I'm gonna cover the like statement regular expressions in, not in, and delete, which I was not able to completely cover in this tutorial. Catch you next time.